everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Roger H3, and today we're going to be talking about everything that I learned in 500 plus hours of playing Overwatch 2. If you are new to the channel and you enjoy the content, please make sure you subscribe and drop a like, and also leave a comment on what you think about some of these items I discuss, some of the tips I give, and everything that I've seen in my 500 plus hours of playing Overwatch 2. Now, the first thing I learned is even in 500 hours, I personally still don't know what role is my best role and my favorite role. Right now, I am the highest rank on support. However, at one point, support was also my lowest rank when I first started playing. I still think DPS is probably the role that I'm best at. However, quite frankly, like I said, I, I don't know what my main role is and what role is my best until I officially reach my peak on every role, which is very time consuming. Which, talking about being time consuming, this leads me into my next point. Climbing the ranks in Overwatch, or really any competitive game, is extremely time consuming, especially if you're doing it in a manner that's legit, where you're not getting your account boosted by playing with people who are smurfing, and you're actually starting from a lower elo rank, and you're trying to climb to a higher elo rank. I started in bronze and silver for the most part, and now I'm in plat and diamond, and my goal is to reach masters here very soon. But to go from bronze to masters is so time consuming. It, it just takes a long time and it takes a lot of dedication. And the reason these games can be so time consuming is in my opinion, ranked games or the way ranks are work is kind of like a paradox. The more time you play, usually in my opinion, will correlate to you being a higher rank. It's extremely hard to jump really fast unless you're just better than everybody else that's in your current rank. And in a lot of cases, say maybe you start playing Overwatch and you're a gold or plat player and you're in bronze. Yeah, you might climb through bronze and silver really fast, but once you get to the rank that you perform at, you kind of hit a plateau where it's harder to get through that rank because you have to adjust, improve, see what you're doing wrong, and just get better with people who are also at the same level you are. Now, don't get me wrong, there are ways that you can improve the process or the speed that you get better. Um, there's different things that you can do. I'm not gonna get into that in this video specifically, but at the end of the day, you know, it's still time consuming. And although there might be some outliers, time spent playing usually does equal skill. Next up, kind of referring back to when I was talking about once you get to the rank that you perform at, it becomes harder to rank up and do as well as what you were doing in ranks below you. So the only way you're really gonna get better is by playing against people who have the same skill set or the same like skill range that you are or playing against people who are better than you. Playing against people who are worse than you, yeah, it might maybe show you what things that you're able to do right against them, but really all this is is an ego booster and it's gonna make you feel like you're a lot better than what you are. And then anytime you go against people who are the same rank as you or who are ranked higher than you, you're gonna realize you're gonna get punished for a lot of the things that you can do against people who are ranked lower than you that they aren't able to punish you for or the people who are ranked higher than you or the same rank as you will react a lot better to some of the things that you might do. So just be really careful about getting that ego boost, especially if you play a lot of quick play. Like I personally play quick play to warm up. However, you have to know that quick play does not equal comp. And realistically, the only way to get better at comp is to play comp. Now, granted, some people do have alt accounts. I do not agree with smurfing. I think smurfing is a bad thing and I don't like when people smurf. I tried to play Valorant now. I'm very new at Valorant. I'm ranked very low in Valorant. And it really annoys me when I get in a game with Smurfs who actually completely throw my game. I, I don't agree with Smurfing, but having an alt account is totally okay to have another account where you can practice other heroes and switch back and forth every time you hit a new peak, or you just play against people who are ranked what you would be ranked if you played a certain hero. Now, what I mean by that is say you play tank and you're a Sigma main, and when you play Sigma, you're ranked diamond. But when you play Wrecking Ball, maybe you play at a gold plat level. So although you have the higher IQ and you're better with another character, when you play ball, maybe you can't compete at the level that you would normally compete at on tank. So you have an alt account where you can practice, not that you throw games or play bad, you still try your best, 
but you don't sacrifice your own rank on your main account and then you have your alt account where you still try your best and you get those experiences playing comp where you might not get those real experiences when you play quick play the next topic i want to talk about is how some content creators try to make it sound like climbing is just so easy and anybody can do it now, I agree that anybody can do it if you put the time in, and it can be easy for some, but a lot of these people who are sitting here saying, I don't understand why you can't climb, this game is so easy to play in if I'm below GM because I'm so good or whatever. But the thing is, is like, they are the top 5% of the people who play these games. So yeah, it's gonna be easy for them. Now, I get what they're trying to do, especially with these unranked to GMs, Although, once again, unranked to GMs is a topic that's very sensitive, and I'm not saying that they're the best thing ever, but you do learn some good stuff from them about how to play around people who aren't as good. And that is the key thing that you can learn from a lot of these content creators who are ranked extremely high, but you have to kind of remove their ego out of it because for them to sit there and tell people in lower ranks it's so easy to rank up, this is not necessarily the case for everybody and everybody learns at their own pace so don't get down when you watch other content creators and they tell you how easy the game is because it just isn't easy for everybody and everybody learns at a different pace now on the other side you do have some content creators who do a really great job of being transparent about how the ranking system actually works and their true feelings on it now, especially in season nine, and I'm sure it's probably already happening in season 10, there were content creators and plenty of people playing Overwatch who have had a ton of hours on Overwatch, who have an extremely high skill level on Overwatch, an extremely high IQ in Overwatch, and they find that the rank system is giving them a really difficult time at ranking up. And this is where, where I mentioned the rank system kind of being like a paradox earlier really comes in because as i mentioned earlier usually if you spend a lot of time playing a game that equals you having a high skill level the more time you play the higher of a skill level you have if you take the game serious and strive to be the best you can however we see people this last season that were in gm trying to climb to champ and they were very transparent about the fact that their percentage that they were gaining was very minimal compared to the percentage they were losing and it was very hard for them to climb so people would go out and make a second account and find that they would place higher on a second account than they would on their main account because their main account had so much history that the system already had a preconceived thought and notion of where this person should be ranked even though they're in the top five percent of players within overwatch now, to wrap up all this talk about content creators and ranks and ranking up, and if you're stuck or hard stuck and you're not, don't be embarrassed about your rank. Everybody starts somewhere. Everybody learns at a different pace. There's always things everybody can do better, whether you're the number one person at DPS or whether you're the worst person at DPS or whatever role that is. There's always something that you can improve on and doing VOD reviews watching your game playback and different stuff like that can always help you pinpoint what areas you need to improve on as well as watching YouTube videos and even potentially getting coaching from friends or external sources that you know do coaching things and stuff like that. As you continue to go through ranking up in Overwatch 2, another thing you'll find is you will always fall, your rank will always go up and down. Sometimes you might be on a rank up game and you might not get it or you just ranked up and then maybe you tilted a little bit and you lost three games in a row and you ranked back down you're always gonna fail you're always gonna lose some games this is gonna happen to everybody no matter who you are the key to it is is just understanding that you reached a peak rank for a reason and you can get back to that peak rank as long as you don't tilt Q you think smart you play the way you know how to play and you know make sure you take breaks if you need them like once again, tilt queuing is such a big thing. We all do it. I did it to myself one time. I dropped from like plat two to like gold three one season on DPS because I just tilt queued the heck out of everything because I was streaming, I was upset, I was irritated and I just completely threw my rank. Don't do that to yourself. But the thing is, is if you do fall, you can get back to where you were. As you can see now, I am 
high plat on DPS again, despite doing that fall. I fell from diamond five down to plat three last season and I climbed back up. I'm high plat two again. And I plan to get into diamond on DPS again this season. You can always climb back up. You're always gonna fail, you're always gonna fall, but don't let that affect your mental state and make sure you keep grinding in a responsible way. Additionally, once again, that you're always gonna fail, you're always gonna fall, you're always gonna have bad games that occur too. Don't let one bad game make you think that all the games after that are gonna be bad. Additionally, all ranks are always gonna have games where you get bad players or people that you feel like are throwing. I get it, in the lower ranks, it's more common because there's such a wide range of people who are there, especially if people have Smurf accounts. Um, but always know that every game isn't always gonna be bad. And especially in the lower ranks, you always have the opportunity to get that Smurf on your team, just like the other team has the opportunity to get that Smurf on their team. All you can do is just focus on what you can control, which is yourself. Focus on your mental, focus on your personal gameplay, focus on improving, and if you keep doing that, you'll get to the point where you'll be the top person on your team making plays no matter what role you play, and you'll be able to get to the point where you can climb. Granted, I understand some roles are a little bit more difficult to absolutely carry games, and I get it. Not every game you want to be responsible for quote unquote carrying, but it is important that you do your role, you do your job, you improve and play the best that you can. Another thing that could definitely help with climbing and winning more games is communication. Make sure you're using comms with your team. Make sure you're calling out stuff in voice chat. Even if no one else is talking, calling out different people that you see, different flankers, what the other team's comp is, if you're gonna alt and different stuff like that is very beneficial to the team so that you all can be as synchronized as possible and just make plays together. Obviously, there are some toxic people. Make sure you don't get into arguments with people because at the end of the day, it's really not gonna benefit you, especially in today's day and age where people are getting banned and muted and silenced for practically anything. Make sure you're careful out there, but I would say definitely try to communicate the best that you can, but if an argument comes out or if somebody's super toxic, then just hold yourself back and just finish out the game doing the best you can, and then hopefully the next game you don't have somebody like that. One more tip I have for you all that you might not really like to hear, and honestly, it's a sad truth that I've come to realize in season nine and going into season 10, is stacking with a lot of friends and teammates, honestly, is not gonna be the best way to climb unless you guys take playing comp extremely seriously and you play it like you're a professional team with grade A comms and you're always functioning as a unit together because whenever you stack with a lot of people and honestly I'm not even saying a full stack even when I have two others with me so three of us we even get some really dicey games you're going to play against people who are functioning as a unit a lot more often because you're going to be playing against other stacks as well as I found usually when I queue with others we end up getting teammates that are super dysfunctional and don't really know what they're doing and it makes it for a really hard situation for climbing. I understand playing with friends can be super fun and obviously a lot of us play games because we want to play games with friends and that's okay but if you're super serious about climbing and you find that whenever you queue with more than two or three people in a party or whenever you queue with specific people although you like talking to them and being friends with them maybe you should take a break from playing comp with them or make a separate account to play with friends and then have a primary account where you can grind your own personal peak and grind through the ranks now once again thank you all very much for being here if you're still here in the video i want you to comment a smiley face on this video to let me know that you made it to the end also, if you enjoy the content, please subscribe and drop a like. Also be on the lookout for me both on Twitch and YouTube. I stream about three times a week and come chat with me and stick around while I continue my grind to masters and hopefully even further higher from that. I'll go ahead and link my Twitch in the description as well as my Discord server link if you guys wanna join, chat with us all and get notified whenever I'm going live and posting new videos and items like that. So once again, one last time, thank you all for sticking around and we'll catch you next time. See ya.